Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to be coding the game Snake using Python. So this is a perfect game project for those of you who are new to programming. And it's also fitting because Python is a type of snake. And to make it convenient for beginners, I will be using the built-in graphics library that comes with Python. So I will not be using Pygame. So this is convenient. You won't have to install anything. You can just start coding. And uh, yeah, let me show you what we have. So here we have a snake. And if I press a key, it'll start moving. And if the snake collides with the red square, which is the food, it will grow one segment. And the goal of the game is to see how long you can make the snake grow without colliding into the walls or colliding into its own body. All right, and if you collide into the walls or into the snake's body, you will see the screen that says game over. All right, so before we begin coding, I just want to quickly mention that I am working on a new tutorial series in Python as well as in Java. So these are all game tutorial series. So here you can see I already have some tutorials in Java, Snake, Tic-Tac-Toe, Minesweeper, and I will have one in Flappy Bird very soon. And I already have many tutorials in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I have one on Doodle Jump, Flappy Bird, Space Invaders, Wordle, 2048, Candy Crush, and Snake as well. So you can find all of these tutorials on my YouTube channel, as well as kennyipcoding.com. And if you want to stay up to date to new tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, so before we begin coding, I just want to quickly mention how we are going to approach designing this game. So we have this game window, and it is 625 pixels by 625 pixels. So the height is 625 pixels, and the width is 625 pixels. So we have 25 rows and 25 columns. And you can see I divided the width and height into 25 by 25 squares. And each tile, each square has a dimension. So each tile is going to be 25 pixels by 25 pixels. So this is going to be 25 and this is 25. So 25 is the tile size. Okay, so 25 times 25 gives us 625. So that's how I got these numbers. And when we draw the snake, for instance, this square, we need to provide an x and y coordinate. This top left corner is 0, 0. And the bottom right corner is 625, 625. So where is our snake currently? So where is this tile located? So this tile is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right and one, two, three, four, five down. So you might think, oh, the X and Y position would be five, five, right? Well, actually it's going to be five tiles to the right and five tiles down. The physical position of the snake itself, this tile is actually going to be five times 25 because we need to account for the tile size. If we just said 5, 5, that would be 5 pixels to the right and 5 pixels down. So we get something over here. But we want the snake to start over here. So it's going to be 5 times 25. So it's 125 by 125. So we are going to scale each of the row and column numbers by the tile size, which is 25. And you might be a little confused right now, but once we start coding the game, you'll start to understand the picture a bit better. So let's begin coding. All right, so for this tutorial, I will be using Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever code editor you want. Uh, if you want to learn how to set up Python with Visual Studio Code, I have a video tutorial on that, and I will link it in the description. All right, let's begin. File, new file, and I'm going to create a Python file. I'm going to save it, and I'll just name it Snake. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create our window for the game. So I'm just going to import a few libraries. So import tkinter, and this will be for the graphics. So tkinter or tkinter, this stands for tk interface. This is our graphical user interface library. And I'm just going to import random as well. 
and this is going to be used for randomly placing the food in a different location each time. So over here, I'm going to define some constants. So in Python, you would define constants using all uppercase. So we have 25 rows and 25 columns. And we said the tile size was 25 pixels. So the window width is going to be tile size times the number of rows. And window height is going to be tile size times the number of columns. All right, so let's create our window. So window is going to be tkinter.tk. So this is going to open up a window. And I'm going to add a title to our window. So window.title snake. And let's also do a window.resizable false for the width and false for the height. So the window is going to be 625 pixels by 625 pixels. And we don't want the user to change the size by expanding the window. And then I'm going to add window.main loop. And this is going to keep our window on. All right, so now if I run a program, you can see we have our window and we have the title snake. And if I try to expand it by dragging on the corner, it won't work. All right, so now that we have our window, what we need is a canvas to draw on. So let's create a canvas. So canvas is equal to tkinter.canvas. And if I hover over this canvas, you can see we have our parameters here. So master is going to be our window. So I'm going to pass in window. And we have other fields here. So you can see we have BG, which is background color. And we also have height. So it's very convenient to have this feature when you're using Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to do BG is equal to black. So this will set the background color to black. Width is going to be window width. Height is going to be window height. And then I'm going to do canvas.pack. And then let's update the window. So window.update. So this is going to add the canvas to our window. So now if I run a program, you can see we have a much bigger window now with a canvas. And I want to get rid of these borders because it adds a little space in between the width and height. So we don't want that. So to do that, I'm going to add two more parameters. Border width is going to be zero. And highlight thickness is also going to be zero. All right, now if I save and run a program, you can see we no longer have the border, okay? And you might notice that every time I run the program, it opens up in a different location. So what I need to do is center the window and give it a specific location on our screen. So to center the window, we need to do a little bit of math here. We need to get the size of our window and the size of our computer screen. So window width is equal to window.winfo width. Window height is equal to window.winfo height. And then we need to do the same for the screen dimensions. So screen width is equal to window.winfo screen width. And screen height it's going to be window.winfo screen height. All right, so now that we have our window width and height and screen width and height, we can use these values to calculate an X and Y position for our window. So similar to with our window in my explanation earlier, our screen has X and Y coordinates. So the top left over here is 0, 0. And the bottom right over here is going to be x is equal to your screen width and y is equal to your screen height. So we need to calculate an x and y position to place our window onto our screen. So to get the midpoint, we want to take half of the screen width as the x position. And for the y position, we will make it half of the screen height. So this gives us an x and y of screen width divided by 2 and screen height divided by 2. So this is the midpoint. 
So what we want to do is shift back a bit. So for the X position, instead of starting at the midpoint of the screen, we want it to move back window width divided by two, and we want it to move up window height divided by two. So it's going to start at this corner. So when you move back, going to the left, you subtract, and if you move up, you also subtract because you are moving towards zero, zero, okay? All right, so using these values, let's calculate the X and Y positions. So window X is going to be int of screen width divided by two minus window width divided by two. And for the window Y position, it will be window Y equal to int screen height divided by two minus window height divided by two. So now that we have our X and Y position, we need to add it to the window. So we are going to do window dot geometry. And if you look at this function, it takes in the X and Y position and the width and height of the window. So it has to be in the form width X height plus X plus Y. So this is a string. So for this, I'm going to use an F string and this allows us to inject the variable values as strings. So here, I'm going to put window width x, window height plus window x plus window y. All right, so now let's run our program. And as you can see, our window is going to open up at the center of our screen. All right, now that we have our window, let's start making the game. So first, I'm going to create a tile class. And this is going to be used for storing the X and Y positions for our snake and the food. So we're going to take in an X and Y position. And then back here, let's initialize the game. So snake is going to be tile, and we need to pass in an X and Y position. So I'm just going to put five, five. But remember, this is pixels. So we want five tile by five tiles. So this is five times tile size and five times tile size. So this is going to be a single tile for the snake's head. Now what we need to do is draw the snake. So I'm going to define a draw function. And here I'm going to declare snake as global. So when I use the snake variable within this function, the function will know that I'm referencing this snake variable that is outside it. So let's draw the snake. So to draw the snake on the canvas, we will do canvas.create rectangle. And this is going to take in the x0, y0, x1, y1. So this is the top left corner, x position, y position, and the bottom right corner, x position, y position. So the top left corner is just going to be snake.x, snake.y, and the bottom right corner, x and y position, is going to be snake.x plus tile size, and snake.y plus tile size. And of course, we need to add color to the rectangle. So fill is going to be lime green. And for the fill color, you can also do RGB values, but there is a set of colors that already exist within Canvas. So I can just write lime green. You can also write red, green, blue, yellow, etc. And I want the drawing to happen in a loop. So I'm going to do window.after. So after every 100 milliseconds, I'm going to call draw again. So this is 100 milliseconds which is one-tenth of a second. So basically, every one-tenth of a second, we are calling draw. So this is essentially 10 frames per second. All right, so now let's call the draw function. And then let's save and run our program. And as you can see, we have the snake here, and it is five tiles to the right and five tiles down, okay? 
Now let's do the same and draw the food. So food is equal to tile. And I'm going to make the X and Y position 10 tiles to the right and 10 tiles down. So 10 times tile size, 10 times tile size. And we are going to do the same thing here for drawing the food. So canvas not create rectangle food.x food.y food.x plus tile size food.y plus tile size. And for the fill color, I'm going to make it red. All right, now let's save and run our program. And as you can see, we have our snake here and we have our food here. Okay, so it's 10 tiles to the right and 10 tiles down. All right, so now that we have both the snake and the food, let's make the snake move. So to do that, we need to add a key listener for our game. So in order to move, we need a velocity x and velocity y. And velocity is the change in position over time. So velocity x, I'm going to set this to zero. And velocity y, I'm going to set this to zero as well. So if both x and y velocities are zero, the snake is not moving. But if I press a key, I want to update the velocity x or y depending on which key I press. So I will be using arrow keys. So over here, I'm going to do window.bind and we are going to add a key listener. So it's going to listen for a key release. So key release basically means that when you press a key on your keyboard, it could be any key, but when you press on the key and you let go, you're releasing the key. So when you release the key, we want to call a function change direction. And let's define this up here. And this function is going to take in a parameter E. So E stands for event. And let's just play with this a bit. I'm just going to print E. So let's run our program. So if I press W, you can see we have key SYM is equal to W. And we also get the key code and the character. If I press up, you can see the key SYM is up. So SYM stands for symbol. And then I can press down, left, right, space, and so on. So let's comment this out. And if I do print e.keysym, key symbol, and I run a program, you can see I press left, up, down, right. We are able to register which key I pressed. So let's comment this out. And depending on which key I press, I will change the velocity x or y. So let's declare velocity x and velocity y as global variables. So if e dot key symbol is equal to up, and you want to make sure that this is capitalized. So here I'm going to set velocity x to zero because we are not moving left and right. And velocity y, I'm going to set this as negative one. L if e dot key symbol is equal to down. So this is going to be positive one. So velocity x is going to be zero and velocity y is going to be one. L if e dot key symbol is equal to left. So velocity x is equal to negative one and velocity y is equal to zero. And then finally, if e dot key sim is equal to right, velocity x is equal to 1, and velocity y is equal to 0. So as a quick recap, going to the left, that's negative x direction. Going to the right is positive x direction. Going up is negative y, and going down is positive y, okay? All right, so now that we have our change direction function defined, we need to move the snake. So I'm going to define a function called move. And let's define snake as a global variable here. So for the snake x position, we are going to add velocity x. And remember, we need to multiply this by tile size. Because if I don't multiply it by tile size, instead of moving one tile over, it's going to move one pixel over. And we need to do the same for the y position.
Okay, and right before we draw our snake over here, I'm going to call the move function. And remember, the draw function is being called 10 times a second. So if I call the move function within draw, that means the snake is going to move at a pace of 10 frames per second. So now let's save and run our program. And if I press right, you can see the snake is moving to the right. If I press down, it's going down, left, up. And you might notice something weird, and that is we have all these squares. And you might be wondering how that got there. And that is because we are not clearing the frame every time we draw again. And so all the frames are basically overlapping each other. So to clear the frame, I'm going to do canvas dot delete all. So every time we draw the new frame, we are going to clear the previous frame. All right, now let's save and run our program. And if I press right, it goes to the right, down, left, and up. So we have two issues here, and that is the snake can move backwards. So if I'm going to the left, I can go right. If I go up, I can go down. This should not happen in a game of snake because the snake has its body behind its head. So we want to prevent that. And another issue is when we pass the food, you can see for a brief moment, the snake disappears. And the reason is we are drawing the snake before the food. So when we draw the food, it covers the snake. So let's fix these issues. So first I'm going to copy and paste this and move that code over here. So we're going to draw the food first and then the snake so that when they collide, we see the snake instead of the food. And then let's take care of the issue over here. So when we press up, we want to make sure that we are not already going down. So and the velocity y is not equal to one. And likewise, when we press the down key, we want to make sure that the snake is not already going upwards. So, and velocity y is not equal to negative one. And when we press the left key, we want to make sure we're not already going to the right side. So, and velocity x is not equal to one. And finally, for the right key, we want to make sure that we're not already going to the left. So, and velocity x is not equal to negative one. Okay, so whenever we press a key to change directions, we want to make sure that we're not going in the opposite direction. All right, so now if I save and run a program, you can see if I press right, I can't go backwards. And I go down, I can't go upwards. So that issue has been resolved. And if I pass the food, you can see the snake gets drawn over the food. Okay. All right. So now that we have the snake moving, we want the snake to eat the food and grow its body. So let's create a list to store all the body parts of the snake. And the body parts are all going to be tile objects. So within our move function, I want to check for a collision between the food and the snake's head. So detecting collision between the food and the snake is very simple. All you need to do is check to make sure that the X and Y positions of the snake and the food are the same. So if snake.x is equal to food.x and snake.y is equal to food.y, we have a collision. So when this happens, we want to add a segment to the snake's body. So snake body dot append tile and I'm going to pass in food.x, food.y. And then after the snake eats the food, we are going to move the food to another location randomly. So we need to update the x and y position of the food. So food.x is going to be random.randint zero columns minus one. So randin is going to return a random number between zero and columns minus one. So this is going to be 25, but we don't want to include 25 because there are 25 tiles and the numbers start at zero. So it's going to be zero to 24. 
and we need to multiply this by tile size. And let's also do the same for the y position. So foo.y is equal to random.randint 0 rows minus 1 times tile size. Now the next thing we need to do is add the snake body to our draw function. So for tile in snake body canvas dot create rectangle tile dot x tile dot y tile dot x plus tile size tile dot y plus tile size fill is going to be lime green. All right, now let's save and run our program. And then now if I collide with the food, you can see the food moves position. And you can see our snake body is growing, but the body is not attached to the head. And the reason is because we're not moving any pieces from the snake body. We are just moving the snake's head. All right, so let's quickly go over how we want to move the snake's body. So let's say we have a snake and it has three tiles and this is the head. And I want to move the head to the right. After I move the head to the right, you can see the head will be over here. But we have a problem and that is the snake's body won't know where to go. It can go here, it can go here. It doesn't know how to connect to the snake's head. So before we move the snake's head, we need to move the rest of the body first. And the strategy to use is we're going to go through each tile starting from the back of the snake's body and we are going to have each tile catch up to the previous tile. So this last tile is going to move up one tile. So there's going to be two tiles in this position. And then the tile that's here will move up to where the head is. And then after it moves up to where the head is, the head can freely move to the right. Okay. So in the move function, we're going to move the snake's body starting from the back. So for I in range, length of snake body minus one and we want to stop at negative one so this is not inclusive so if we stop at negative one we are actually stopping at zero and we want to go by steps of negative one so let's get the tile at that index and we are going to make a check so if i is equal to zero this means that this is the tile that is at the start of the snake's body. So this is right before the snake's head. If that is the case, we are going to do tile.x is equal to snake.x and tile.y is equal to snake.y. Else, we need to get the previous tile. So prev tile is equal to snake body of i minus 1. So tile.x is equal to prev tile.x, tile.y is equal to prev tile.y. Let's save and run a program. All right, so now if I move the snake and the snake eats the food, the body grows and it moves along with the snake's head. So now what we need to do is check for game over. And that happens when we collide against a wall or if the snake collides against its own body. All right, so over here, let's create a variable called game over. And by default, let's set it to false. So in our change direction, I'm going to add game over. So if game over, return. So if game over, we won't have the snake respond to key presses. And over here, let's define game over as a global variable. And I forgot to do so earlier, but let's just also do the same for food and snake body. And so if game over, let's just return. So if game over, the snake will stop moving. And so for our game over conditions, we will check if snake.x is less than zero or snake.x is greater than or equal to window width or snake.y is less than zero or snake.y is greater than or equal to window height, that means we cross the boundaries of our window. And so we're going to set game over to true and return. 
And the second case is if the snake's head collides with its body. So for tile in snake body, if snake.x is equal to tile.x and snake.y is equal to tile.y, we're going to set game over to true and then return. All right, let's run our program. So let's play the game, and if we collide against the wall, game over. So the snake has gone past the boundaries, and as you can see, we cannot move the snake anymore. And let's also check to make sure that when the snake collides with its own body, we will get game over. So just need a few more pieces. Okay, it should be enough. And you can see game over and we are no longer able to move the snake. All right, so one last thing we need is score. So we're going to create a variable score and just initialize it to zero. And so when the snake collides with the food and eats the food, we're going to update the score by one. And then let's draw the score. So earlier I forgot, so let's just define food snake body game over and score as global variables and it's not really necessary to do this unless you are reassigning the variables here but in this case I just like to have this here to note to myself that these are indeed global variables so down here I'm going to do if game over canvas dot create text so we need to define an X and Y position. So if game over, I want to add a game over message at the center of our screen. So the X position will be window width divided by two. Y position will be window height divided by two. Let's define a font to be Arial and the font size will be 20. Let's make the text say game over and let's pass in a score and then let's do fill is equal to white. So this is going to make the font color white. Else, if it's not game over, we are going to draw the score on the top left corner of the window. So canvas.create text. Let's do 30 for the X position. So 30 from the top right and 20 from the top right. So it's going to be 30 to the right and 20 down. And let's make the font Arial 10. So it's going to be smaller. And the text is going to be an F string score. Finally, the fill is going to be white. All right, now let's save and run our game. And as you can see on the top left corner, we have the score variable, but unfortunately, um, we have an issue here. So let's see what it says. Local variable score reference before assignment. Uh, yes. So we need to define score as a global variable somewhere. And that is over here. So you can see we are reassigning score by adding one to it. So in this case, it is necessary to declare score as a global variable. So now let's save and run a program. All right, let's try again. So score is on the top left corner. And if I move the snake, snake eats the food, score goes up by one. And you can see we have a fully functional game of snake. So the snake goes past the left boundary and we can see we have game over eight and we can no longer move the snake. All right, so that's it for this game tutorial. So you can continue working on this game if you want. You can change the colors. You can also add some enhancements. So as you can see, we have game over here and there's no way to reset the game unless I rerun the program. So what you can do is within this change direction function, you can add a key, for example, the space key, and make a check to see if the space key is pressed and it's game over, 
we can reset the game by setting game over back to false. And when you do so, you want to reset all these variables back to their original values. And there's also a minor issue, and that is the food can randomly be placed where the snake's body is already touching. So it might look hidden until the snake moves away from the food. Um, so that's one thing you can also work on. But uh, yeah, that's it for this game tutorial. And if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.